Hello everyone, Indro here. As promised in my previous video, today I have an in-depth photo manipulation for you. Today we'll be creating this space fantasy kind of composition with a planet, some asteroids and a super giant astronaut and this weird glowing shape. Actually, I've been creating a space series of the nine planets. I know Pluto is not a planet, but I cannot help it. On my Instagram, and I thought why not create another one and show you how I did that. So since this will be the 10th in the composition, I'm calling it Planet 10 or Planet X, however you want to say it and let's get through it. Now if you want to have a look on all the 9 compositions that I did, be sure to head over to my Instagram and let me know if you like them or not. Now for the stock images, since I was using different angles of the astronaut and the asteroids, I downloaded 3D assets from Envato Elements. Now this video is no sponsored, I'm using my personal subscription to get those stock images and I kind of became lazy and I used those stock images to create this image that I'll be showing you over here. But I'll be also adding links to free alternatives like Pixels, Pixabay, Unsplash where you can get similar kind of images and the process is more or less same. If you want to try it, you can download the images from there and give it a shot. Okay then, let's jump right into it and get started. So our composition is 2000 by 2500 pixels. It's 300 dpi, you can keep it 72. The ratio is 4 by 5 so that it becomes easier to post on Instagram. Let's quickly place different elements and then we'll start with the color grading. Here goes the nebula background. Let's add our planet. Time for the moon. Let's put in the asteroids. And here goes our super giant oversized astronaut or cosmonaut, however you wanna call it. Now, before we start with the color grading, I'll be also creating that weird glowing shape that you have been seeing in all of my compositions. Now, these are not some shapes that I made out on my own. These are basically the popular planetary shapes, which I tweaked a bit to give it somewhat a unique kind of look. So since this is Planet X, I'll be creating something around the X-ish shape. So for that, let's get the shape tool, let's take rectangle tool, make sure fill is set to no fill and for the stroke, maybe I'll take something around a greenish color and I'm setting my stroke width to 10 pixels. Now this depends on your image size, this suits fine for me. Now let's create a new layer and I'll drag to create the square but I'm holding shift and alt to get a perfect square. Now if you're using some older version of Photoshop you might not need to hold the alt key but for newer versions you need to hold it otherwise it'll start from the center. Now with the rectangle done I'll create another layer and I'll switch to the line tool. With the same settings I'll create a line. I'm again holding shift to get it straight but it doesn't matter. I'll be duplicating it by pressing Ctrl GR command G on the keyboard. Now let's move one of the shapes over here and I'll select this path selection tool. Let's zoom in a bit and I'll get one of these node points and I'll drag and try to match it with the corners so that we get those diagonal lines in our square. Let's do the same for the other one. Let's grab the path selection tool. Let's grab and match it with the corner of our square. So here we have it. Now let's select shift and grab all of them. Let's press Ctrl G or Command G on the keyboard to group them. Let's rename it to shape and I'll maybe rename it to shape backup. Then I'll duplicate it by pressing Ctrl G or Command G on the keyboard and I'll merge this group by pressing Ctrl E or Command D on the keyboard. Let's rename it to shape only. Now I'll right click and select postcard. Now this will convert it into a 3D object and it will also prompt me to move to 3D workspace. I do not need that. So I'll press no for now. And as you can see, this layer is now a 3D layer. Now I can move it. I can grab this orbit 3D camera tool and I can move it and get that perfect angle that I'm looking for. This should be fine, I guess. Let's right click and select rasterize 3D. I'll control T or command T to bring up the free transform tool and I'll increase the size a bit just like this. All right, this should be okay. Let's move the moon a bit. That should be fine. Now we'll get back here later. Let's proceed with the other color grading parts. Since I want to do a bluish purple tone over here, I'll add some overall color gradings. Let's create a new vibrance layer and increase the vibrance all the way to plus 100. 
Let's bring up a color balance layer. I'll drop the cyan and the midtones to around minus 50 and also drop the yellows to around minus 25. Let's go to the shadows and increase our blues to around plus 10. And let's go to the highlights and let's increase the cyan to around plus 8 should be good. And let's increase the blues to around plus 10. Next let's bring up a curves adjustment layer and let's increase the highlights a bit. This should be fine and let's go to the blues channel. Let's put a point over here and try to draw an S carve. This will boost the blues on the highlights area. Now I'll quickly group them and color code them for the sake of order in everything. Now let's hide all of them and start working on our background. I'll simply right click and rasterize the layer and I'll press Ctrl J or Command J on the keyboard to duplicate it and I'll rename it as stars as I'll be needing it in the future. Let's hide it for the time being and select our nebula layer and I'll be using a mixer brush tool to kind of give it a painterly look and completely destroy the stars over here. Okay, so let's select the mixer brush tool and let's grab our soft round pressure opacity and flow brush and make sure this is not checked which says load the brush after each stroke make sure this is only checked which says clean the brush after each stroke now i'll be using a pen tablet to get the best results if you do not have a pen tablet and you only have mouse that's fine you can play with the weight and the load and the mix maybe you can lower it down and also the flow so that it gives you a better result but with the pen tablet you will get the best results out of it now I'm adjusting the brush size with the square brackets on my keyboard and I'll be using some circular quick motion to create a fluffy texture of the clouds here. I'll be merging the stars, don't worry about that. That's why I have duplicated the layer and we'll be using that layer to create the stars at a later point of time. Now this will take some time, you should spend as much time as you want. This depends upon your personal preference, how much fluffy nature you want to have. I'll fast forward from here and I'll get back when it's done. Alright with that done let's add some color printing, let's create a hue saturation layer and let's click this colorize checkbox and let's increase the hue to around 240, that should be fine. Let's keep the saturation to around 30 should be good and let's decrease the lightness to around minus 32. Let's enable our plant layer for the time being. I'll be adding some greenish and crimson tinge to the sky so let's create a new layer and I'll change the blending mode to hard light and I'll take some dark shade of green like this. I'll switch my brush to a soft round regular brush and I'll simply try to add a hint of green over here and let's change the color to somewhat magenta, dark magenta and then I'll add a little bit of magenta over here. This is just to create some variation in the sky. Let's hide the planet again. And this time we'll make use of the stars layer which we kept. I will desaturate the colors by going to image adjustment, then desaturate. I'll right click and go to blending options. I'll change the blending mode to color dodge. And in this, this layer slider, I'll hold alt or option on the keyboard and drag this black node point to split it. This will hide the black areas, but splitting will also smoothen it out. So now you can see the stars very prominent over here, but also we got rid of the unwanted dark areas and we only have the bright areas of the stars visible. Maybe we'll drag it to here and that should be fine. Let's start working on our planet. I'll add a curves adjustment layer and right click and create clipping mask. And then I'll go over to the reds channel and try to create an S curve but I'll increase the reds in the shadow region. So this is the black point, this is the shadow, this is the midpoint, these are the highlights and this is the white point. I'm trying to create a violet tone on the planet so I'm increasing the reds over here and I'll just decrease it from the highlights so that the cool effect of the blue color in the highlights remain otherwise if I increase it it will become a bit of warmer tone. Now let's go to the blues and we'll increase the blues just like this 
Now we'll do the shadows for that. Let's create an exposure layer. We'll again right click and select create clipping mask. For the values, let's drop it down to around minus 3.55 should be good. Let's keep the offset to zero and let's change the gamma correction to 0.68 should be all good. Now I'll select the layer mask and press Ctrl I or Command I on the keyboard to invert it and then I'll take my soft round brush and select color white as my foreground color and start painting so that I get this nice soft shadow on this part of the planet. Now the light is coming from here so we'll make all our highlights and shadows based on that principle. Now that should be fine but we will also need some outer glow on our planet. For that I'll select the planet layer, I'll right click and go to blending options. I'll select outer glow, I'll change the blending mode to linear dodge add, I'll change the color to somewhat of a bluish tone and maybe decrease the size a bit. It needs to be very faint, just a hint and that should be ok. Let's select ok. I'll also right click over here on this FX icon you can see. I'll select create layer. Now this will isolate our layer cells that was applied on the layer but change it to a new layer. Like here you can see. I did that because I want to change the color of this glow to somewhat crimson tone because we have that violet shade on our sky. We cannot do it with the layer styles in the blending options. So I took it apart into a separate layer. Now I'll press Ctrl or Command on the keyboard and click on the thumbnail of this layer icon to select only the pixels and get rid of the transparent pixels. Now with the color crimson kind of shade selected with the soft front brush, I will try to paint here softly so that we only have this crimson layer on the bottom portion and the top layer remains blue. Let's unselect by pressing Ctrl D or Command D on the keyboard. With that done, let's create the highlights. For that, I'll select the top exposure layer, I'll create a new layer, I'll right click and select create clipping mask. I'll press D on the keyboard to get the default color. I now have black as a foreground color. I'll press Alt and Backspace to fill it with black and then I'll change the blending mode to linear dodge add. Now I'll take my highlights color which will be kind of blue on the top portion. I'll take a dark shade of blue and I'll paint slightly on this area to get our highlights. Just like that. We'll also create a rim highlight on the bottom portion. So let's change our color to pinkish magenta kind of tone and let's paint over here. Now if you undo some part, let's select black and paint with it to remove any unwanted areas. Our planet is more or less done, let's work on the shape layer. We'll create a layer mask on the shape and try to mask out areas so that the shape looks it's passing through the planet. I'll simply hold Ctrl or Command on the keyboard and click on the planet layer thumbnail to outline the planet selection. I'll make sure I'm selecting the shape layer mask thumbnail. I'll press D on the keyboard to reset my colors to default and this time I'll press Ctrl and Backspace or Command and Backspace on the keyboard to fill it with black and as you know black on the layer mask hides things and white shows things. Now let's deselect the selection and let's show parts of the shape. Let's select a hard round brush, make sure the foreground color is white and let's try to paint areas where I think will create the impression that the shape is kind of passing through the planet's core. I think this somewhat conveys the meaning. And over here you can see the beauty of the 3D shape that we used. The nearer area is thicker and the farther the shape is it became thinner. Now this was easy because we did it with the 3D shape. Alright now we'll add some layer styles to make this shape glow really bright. Let's right click on the layer and select blending options. Let's go to color overlay, change the blending mode to linear dodge and let's select somewhat light green color. So the color that you selected at first doesn't matter that much, we will be changing it over here. Next go to outer glow, make sure blending mode is set to linear dodge add. Let's increase the opacity to 100%, change the color to somewhat a medium tone of green and let's change the spread to 5 and size to 75 pixels. Maybe we can decrease the opacity a bit. Now we'll be adding a cocktail of drop shadows so follow along with me. Select the drop shadow, change the blending mode to linear dodge add 
change the color to somewhat of a dark green tone click ok and the angle doesn't matter because we'll be keeping the distance to zero the spread to zero and let's change the size to around 15 pixels 13 should be fine now if you do not have a drop shadow you can simply press this plus icon to create another one so i already had one let's delete that now as you can see you must be having the same thing a single drop shadow let's click this plus button to create another drop shadow let's change that color to somewhat of a different shade of green let's keep it to darker tone make sure the blending mode is linear dodge and then we'll keep the same parameters distance zero spread zero and size is 13 maybe we can increase it to around 30 that's fine let's again create this plus button to create another drop shadow this time change the color to somewhat of a white color and increase the size to around 45 let's also drop the opacity a bit click the plus button to create another drop shadow and change the color over here to somewhat of a dark green tone let's increase the opacity to around 100 percent this time increase the spread to around 15 and change the size to around 250 we'll need to drop the opacity a bit it's too intense 45 percent should be good let's click ok now this is looking pretty good right we'll need to correct the highlights over here so let's select the planet the highlight layer and we'll create another layer so this is the second highlights layer we'll do the same thing we'll right click and select create clipping mask make sure your foreground color is set to black and let's press alt and backspace or option and backspace to fill it to fit black let's change the blending mode to linear dodge and take the same kind of green dark green tone that you used for the glowing shape and we'll paint on it to mark the highlights on our planet make sure to change the brush to a soft round pressure opacity flow i'm using a pen tablet if you're using mouse you can simply reduce the opacity and the flow a bit i'm not going overboard over here i'm just marking areas just to give a slight impression that the glowing shape is coming out from the core of the planet let's add some nice green hue over here just to boost the overall highlights of the planet on this top left area and also give this greenish tinge it's a kind of reflection that the colors that are there in the composition should have on the nearby objects i think i should keep it like this for the time being let's go ahead and work on the moon for the moon let's quickly add an exposure layer right click and select create clipping mask let's change the values to around minus three for exposure 0 for offset and 0.69 for gamma correction. Now with the layer mask selected, I'll take color black and I'll paint our areas from the top left so that the shadow only sticks to the bottom right. Let's add a curves to add some nice violet color casting although we should be having green as the highlights but I just want to change the color tone to somewhat violet. I've also clicked this icon to clip the layer to the moon layer. Let's go to the reds channel and boost up the reds a bit and also let's go to the blues channel and boost up the blues. Now as you know when you mix blue and red it kind of creates that violet tone. Let's add the highlights, I'll create a new layer, I'll right click and select create clipping mask. Now the background color is black so let's fill it, press ctrl or command and backspace to fill it. I'll change the blending mode to linear dodge and let's add some highlights. Now I'm filling it with black because as you know most of the times I paint highlights with adding a solid color fill and painting on the layer mask but this time I'm using a different technique like creating a blank layer and filling it with black and then adding the highlight color. This is because if you do not fill the layer with black you will have transparency and sometimes highlights with linear dodge and transparency in the layers behaves pretty weird so I'm filling it with black and then painting the highlights color. I've taken some greenish color and let's add some green highlights over here. Maybe I'll switch my color to some magenta tone and I'll add some magenta also just to keep it same with the planet. Maybe we need to decrease the brightness of this moon so we can double click on this curves adjustment and drag the RGB curve a little bit down just to darken it up. That should be fine. Time to work on the asteroids. Let's make them visible. Maybe we'll scale them down a bit. Let's add an exposure layer and right click and select create clipping mask. 
for the values let's take it down to around 2.73 should be fine let's keep zero for the offset and for the gamma correction let's increase it to around 0.8 this time i'll use a different method to add the rim lights for that let's right click on the asteroid layer and go to blending options we'll select inner shadow make sure blending mode is changed to linear dodge add and we'll take a nice greenish tone because we'll be having the highlights in the shade of green we'll take some shade around here not too dark not too bright that should be okay let's increase the opacity a bit so that we can see it we'll uncheck this use global light and then we'll change this slider so that it matches the angle of the highlight now let's change the distance to around four pixels Choke should be 0% and also increase the size to around 4 pixels. Now this has given us a nice rim highlight to work upon. We should decrease the opacity a bit. Maybe 50% is all good. Now I'll use my old technique to add some overall highlights. Let's get a solid color fill. The color is fine in the shade of dark green. I'll change the blending mode to linear dodge. I'll right click and select create clipping mask. I'll select the layer mask. I'll press Ctrl I or Command I on the keyboard to fill it with black then i'll take a soft round brush and i'll switch to white color on the foreground and i'll paint lightly to mark the highlight regions now as you know i tell in all of my videos i do have an in-depth video on how to do highlights and shadows it should be in the description section you can check it out i hope you like it let's increase down the opacity a bit Let's do the same thing for our foreground asteroid. Let's create an exposure layer. Right click and create clipping mask. For the values, let's decrease it to around minus 1.64. For the offset, it should be zero. And for the gamma correction, let's keep it to around 0.83. Let's again add the same inner shadow treatment. Right click on the asteroid layer, go to blending options and select inner shadow. Make sure use global light is not checked and change the angle so that you get the correct highlight. Let's keep the distance to 5 pixels, choke to 0% and let's increase the size to around 10 pixels. We can also increase the opacity a bit. We can also add some outer glow just for some stylized reason. So let's change the blending mode to linear dodge and decrease the opacity a bit. Color is in the greenish tone which is correct the spread is five person that's fine maybe we should decrease the size a bit 27 pixels is okay i'll add a layer on top of it and right click and select create clipping mask and fill it with black black is my foreground color so i'll press controller command and backspace to fill it with black change the blending mode to linear dodge and i'll add some overall color casting on this foreground asteroid so let's add some greenish tone over here Let's zoom in a bit and I'll add some bluish tone so let's take some bluish color just like this I'm color picking from the sky itself and I'll paint softly so that we reduce the greenish color over here it's too harsh I think maybe we can reduce the outer glow a bit it's too much I think let's reduce the size a bit 20 pixels is fine and also let's reduce the opacity to around 15%. I think I need to work on this rock areas a bit. Based on the shape of the asteroid, I'm painting the highlights. Alright, let's work on the astronaut. Let's do the same thing. Let's create an exposure layer and right click and create clipping mask. Punch in values of around minus 2.2. 1 3 is fine offset 0 is all good and also increase the gamma correction to around 0.79 let's add some overall color grading we'll add a curves adjustment layer right click and select create clipping mask and let's go to the reds channel and increase it a bit and also let's go to the blues channel and increase it a bit to give that purple tone now let's add some highlights for that we'll do the same inner shadow technique i double clicked on the astronaut layer to open up my blending options let's select the inner shadow make sure global light is not checked blending mode is linear dodge some greenish color is selected and let's change the angle so that we can align it properly let's zoom in a bit so that we can see it better let's reduce the distance from 5 pixels to around 3 pixels let's give the choke to 0% and also size to around 5 pixels for the overall highlights we'll take the solid color fill approach let's create a solid color fill 
we'll keep it in the shade of medium or to dark green let's right click and select create clipping mask we'll change the blending mode to linear dodge let's select the layer mask and press ctrl or command i to fill it with black now let's take a soft round brush and with color white selected we'll paint softly to get the highlight areas now i'm using different techniques of doing highlights so that you can understand and that there is no single way to achieve anything in photoshop and it all boils down to your personal preference so whatever suits best to you you can take that path i'll also play a bit with the blend if section let's right click and go to the blending options i'll hold alt or option on the keyboard and split the blend if of this underlying section so that some black areas from the underlying astronaut object becomes visible and the highlight become more realistic now if you think there are too many stars, you can always go down to the stars layer, right click and select blending options and play with the sliders to reduce the overall appearance of the stars. Now if you want, you can add some clouds to add some more elements to our fantastical composition. I'll create a new layer on top of the moon and let's group it and call it clouds. Let's select the layer and take a soft round brush with reduce opacity and flow. I'm using a pen tablet so I'm not reducing the opacity and the flow, it will react to my pen pressure but if you're using mouse you can reduce this opacity and flow values to get a better result. Now I'll color pick from this sky background and you can add some clouds as you feel like. I'll add some just like this and I'll add some highlights so that we can see that this shape laser beam is kind of reacting with the clouds might look cool or not that's up to your personal preference now i'll create a new layer on top of it and right click and select create clipping mask i'll change the blending mode to linear dodge maybe i'll fill it with black like i was showing you earlier for that let's press d on the keyboard to reset our default colors and let's press alt and backspace or option and backspace to fill it with black and now i'll switch my colors to somewhat darker shade of green in which we are doing all the highlights and paint some highlights on the cloud if you want to erase any part simply select black color and paint to erase any unwanted areas Now with that done, let's add some final adjustments. I think we should add a little more shadow to our planet. That should make it more mysterious. I'll take white as my foreground color and paint on the exposure layer to add the shadow a bit. And then you can add some camera raw filter if you want, but I'll try to do it without it. Let's add some curves adjustment layer and let's try to do an S curve to increase the contrast a bit. Not too much, just a little bit. The bright patch of stars over here looks kind of odd, let's try to fix it. I'll take my mixer brush tool and I'll try to mix them together a bit. Let's add some overall sharpening if you want. Let's create a new layer on top of everything, let's call it sharpening. And I'll press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E on the keyboard or command option Shift and E if you're on Mac to create a snapshot of everything and then go to filter, other and high pass and select two pixels and click OK and change the blending mode to overlay and you can adjust opacity as you like maybe we'll take it down to around 40% and let's add some noise because without noise the digital artwork kind of looks artificial so we'll create another layer on top of everything and let's rename it to noise I'll press shift and F5 on the keyboard to bring up my fill menu I'll select 50% gray from the contents and click OK next go to filter noise add noise Let's add a noise amount of 10% and click OK. Change the blending mode to overlay and reduce the opacity to around 45%. You can zoom in a bit to see the intensity of the noise. Maybe we can take it down. 35% should be all good. So I'd like to keep the composition up to here. If you want to make some modifications, go ahead and add your whole crazy ideas over here. And if you want to see how to do highlights, the video should be coming in the end card right now. You can click it to see it or you can see the playlist for my other compositions. I hope you like this video. If so, please don't forget to subscribe my channel because that would really help me to create more videos like this. Well then, I'll see you in my next video and till then, enjoy creating.